You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with us. Excited to be back in these chairs with a new desk. You might have noticed. If not, I understand. I probably wouldn't have noticed either. But we're excited to be back with you. Thank you for uh, hanging out with us. Yeah, this desk we actually used at the AUVSI conference, now owned by a company in which I can now not pronounce. A missile Düsseldorf. Something like that. Oh, they're um, a great company. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sure they are. But that said, my important piece of information here was that this desk was our broadcasting desk for the big drone soccer program. I would say it was the sweetheart of that show. It's funny because uh, a lot of people did so much press on just drone soccer during that show. We made the news, I think it was like five times that week. It was amazing. People so are excited about drone soccer, that's for sure. Yeah, and I'm grateful to be a partner and sponsor of drone soccer. They utilize the Props LMS system. And if you're a drone team or program and you need a great training program that's entertaining and informative, reduces your customer service fees, and creates a systematic system systematic system of communications and operations. Now that's a system right look, there. Look a no systematic fur- system. Systematic system. <laughs> look no further than... I gotta get me one of them. Props LMS. <laughs> Jeez, Rob. <laughs> All right. We're so- gonna systematize our system. <laughs> Don't politicize, systematize. Or as the FAA says, visualize. Uh, if you ever need to know visualize yeah it's like someone did a funny like 420 joke at the faa they're like how do you find all the uas maps visualize it man (laughs) no literally just google visualize it i think we all need to start hiring more jamaican boys yes visualize it (laughs) bringing some fun to the house anywho anywho okay i'm totally messed up whatever it was you were just doing i don't even know anymore and we've moved on but hey uh the good news is that um the first point was our (laughs) desk was from drone soccer (laughs) and now we're going to be going into a question to help all of you i do want to say thank you to everyone who came to the experience training that was some of the most fun i have had in the last five years years that house was immaculate uh 20, square feet of racquetball courts basketball courts roman pools enough bedrooms to uh make the brady bunch uh feel like they've got a lot of room for its own cantina which was a fun place to hang out in the evening that's right that's right the contrador frijoles <laughs> was uh, providing drinks the whole week. It was great. So uh, I think uh, our repertoire was a little narrow. People started, people were asking stuff we didn't have. Like vodka. Can I get a rum and coke? No. No. <laughs> Sorry, Ariel. I brought what I drink. <laughs> Free drinks if you love whiskey. Which is Sprite, by the way. <laughs> All right, let's get to today's question. By the way, our next experience training, we're about to launch it. It's going to be experience.thedroneu.com. So check In it out. all not ser- seriousness, the experience training was amazing. And the eight ladies and gentlemen that joined us, thank you. I don't know if you'll hear this, but it was an incredible experience for us, for me. Uh, and just uh, to see the progression, is it's a lot, a lot of fun um, to see people make that kind of progress. It was a great group good people, and uh, I'm excited to see them launch. Good afternoon, guys. I have a quick question for you. I'm a salesman at a car dealership, and I have a Mini 2. So my questions are, what are viable jobs with the Mini 2 besides, like, real estate and progression? Is the M30T a viable drone? And how do I stick out as a great drone pilot for cinematic filming? Because that's what I'm in. Thank you. And I'll be hoping to listen to this podcast and thank Joan you for everything. Thank you, buddy. We really do appreciate you taking the time and the effort to call in a question. Um, let's just jump right in. So the Mini 2, he's saying, can it do things other than real estate and progression? You know, how many, how, how many times have we talked about, you know, sometimes the best drone that you have is the one that's with you. Yeah. And, you know, we have said, I've also said many times like, oh, a Mini 2 can't really do X or it can't really do Y. 
it obviously is not going to be very good in, in windy days over 10 miles an hour or 15, you know, tops. Getting smooth shots can be really hard, you know, but there's a lot of things that you can do with it. Social media videos, reels videos are probably going to be easier with a Mini 3 Pro just for that, you know, portrait mode. But look, Rob, we all, as you said, I'm going to take your thunder here. Uh, as we all said, we all, or as you said, we all start from different places, mm. right? And I think there's two things that I really wanted to hit on this particular show um, in order to, to be as helpful and insightful as possible. He wants to be a good cinematic pilot. He wants to set himself up to be different and that's what it takes to be successful yep and so when it comes to setting yourself up as a cinematic pilot what does that look like let's try to take this in steps okay number one step is going to be having a still or stationary subject that you can get really smooth orbital shots that you can chop up, put into reels, put into videos, do all those things. Okay, then the next step from doing nice smooth orbits is doing orbits and adding like a tilt and maybe adding some elevation, right? So you go from nice circles, proportional movements on the sticks to nice circles where you're elevating and tilting the camera down at the same time, right? What would be the next progression in that as far as your cinematic capability? I would say cinematic capability um, would be now getting those same shots around moving objects, right? And then I would say the next step, step three, would be getting very, very close to those moving objects, yet still getting smooth shots, right? You can learn the basics of, you know, film and, and cinema and video and getting the right light and all these things. And those are important, but I can't tell you how many shots I've seen that, that are lit perfectly, but they can't fly the drone correctly. And it just kind of ruins the shot or the subject's too far out of frame. And you're kind of wondering like, what, what is the shot? Like Gray Man, like so many examples of that instance in the movie gray man hmm. and it's not the pilot's fault you know it's kind of the director maybe not understanding how to get the most out of the drone the first time working with it who knows who cares could be the pilot's fault it, of course I, if they're sure. if they're shooting a movie then it probably isn't as a uh, coach taylor would say on the lacrosse team it's user error paul <laughs> <laughs> well that's a thing yes for all of us what did he say like 99 percent of the time it's user error Thanks. Thanks, Coach Taylor. Yeah, GFI. Appreciate, appreciate the pep talk. God bless you. So, uh, but it, it, it's true, you know, and then the next step from, you know, great cinematic shots that are really close on the move where you're getting that smoothness, then it's playing with the light, right? It, it's getting the right light. Honestly, the, the formula for video is not really difficult. You put an ND filter on, you slow your shutter speed down, you lock everything else in. Biggest mistake I see with pilots is not hitting the AE lock button top right corner of your screen um for some drones bottom right corner of your screen it literally is a uh looks like a lock icon and then it says ae on it you're going to lock that so when you're tilting up or tilting down you don't get these enormous changes in exposure as you do it so i would say as far as having cinematic skill i think i just broke that down in the most succinct and uh manageable terms possible mm -hmm. um may maybe there's probably a better way to say it okay um in fact, Donald Trump would be like, that's the best. But um, that said, he uh, he made a big jump there, Rob. He did, yeah. We went from the Mini 2 to asking if the M30T was viable. So one thing is that we didn't necessarily cover what viable for what, but just in general, it's a phenomenal drone. I know you love it. Well, you know, I think that this is actually, this question begs a different question. And it's something that I have not seen anyone talk about and it's one of the biggest values that I see out of the M30T over the Mavic 3 Pro. The Mavic 3 Pro would probably be a similar setup as the M30T. It's not going to have attitude mode. So that means flying moving subjects is going to be much more difficult. And you cannot record all three cameras at one time. This is I've, I've not heard anyone talk about this. The Mavic 3 Pro cannot record all three cameras at the same time. The M30T can do it. Now, if you have a large volume of jobs, let's say that this guy starts filming for his dealership, right? Or just for himself. He just starts making videos just for his clients only, right? Which mm -hmm. actually would be a brilliant idea. But 
he starts making these videos and let's say that he wants to make a video, a 60 second video about every single car he's selling. If he's got the M30T, he could literally do a couple of orbits of that car, you know, where you spray the driveway down with water, park the car in it, do it really early or really late in the evening, get some crazy reflection shots, do some orbits, some cranes. And what I mean by a crane is you're essentially at a stationary position tilt your camera up, elevate the drone and tilt the camera down to match the speed of your elevation up. Do it nice and slow. Okay. Do a couple of crane shots. And now you can literally templatize all these reels. And because your M30T is going to shoot your wide view, your super tight view and your FPV kind of like making it look like an FPV drone view all at the same time, you can even get the predator look as well with a thermal camera that could help you if you're shooting these high volume jobs that could help you systematize video on a level the Mavic 3 Pro could never do. It's just, really any other drone. Yeah, really any do. other drone could do. I mean, I guess you could do it with the M300, but why pay 30000 for that when you can pay twelve for the M30? Mm -hmm. um, and personally, if you're doing subject tracking, you know, the M30T does have attitude mode. I love the way the M30T flies. It flies like the Inspire 2 if you haven't flown one. Um, Inspire 2, car terms. Let's put this in car terms. I don't know what kind of dealership he works at. Let's just say it's like a BMW dealership, Okay. Um, let's take, okay. The, the Mavic three pro is going to fly like a one series BMW with the smallest engine possible. So practically a Prius. Um, <laughs> okay. So. Priuses are pretty quick nowadays. I don't know if you know that. Uh, I don't know if you have ever seen the Top Gear Prius versus a BMW. That was a long time ago. But it was fascinating. That so. was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anywho, carry on. <laughs> oh, gosh. Why do you... Don't get me started on the Prius crap, man. Like, no, I'm telling you. How does I'm a Prius you. make sense? Okay, you ship it 9,000 miles to put a battery in it that's going to last 10 years. Oh, oh Lord. Good. Anywho, anywho. You back have to the great drones. aerodynamics. <laughs> so the Mavic 3 Pro, you're saying, is no better than a one series BMW with the way it flies, yes. Well, if you're ever going to chase a car, you're not going to do it very well in that drone. It just, gotcha. With the banking turn, with the prioritization of the yaw over the roll, it really sucks. You really can't get super smooth, nice stuff. That's why you see Inspires on set, not Mavics. That said, an M30T could do it. And what I'm talking about is literally moving around a car while it's on the move. Uh, Mavic 3 Pro, Mavic 3, they're going to suck at it. Um, it's just... I don't know what they did with the flight characteristics, Rob, but it's garbage. So now let's say that you want to get the same shot over and over again with a car. Let's Okay, perfect example. The lake right here at the end of the road. Okay, let's say you want to get a shot because there's two lakes on each side of the road. So if you wanted to literally shoot the car, look like it's driving over water, like walking on water, but driving over water. If you wanted to shoot that in all three cameras on the Mavic 3 Pro, it would be like the car drives once and you film it in the wide. Okay. Then the car turns around, you go back and you do it again. And then you'd now do it with the 50 millimeter or whatever equivalent is. I'm just making these numbers up. Okay. Then the car turns around and you now do it again. Well, now you've almost wasted an entire battery for just three shots. Whereas with the M30T, the car goes by one time and you captured it with all four cameras and you're done. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's a volume question, right? If you're going to make that decision on a business, this is where Rob comes in. If you're just doing a couple of car commercials, your M Mavic 3 Pro is going to be fine. You could actually probably get even better stuff with the Mini 3 Pro um, just because at least you can shoot portrait video, right? But if you're doing volume... M30T shooting all those cameras at one time, that offers a lot of value for a business that's focused on doing consistent high volume videos. Mm -hmm. So like if you have social media videos on retainer, no better drone. Or even doing things like construction progress. You can get these various camera angles, or maybe the angles isn't the right word, but shots with one flight that might be beneficial to your customer. Yeah, I would also argue that the M30T, it is a higher price point, but it's also going to open up a world of jobs that will never be offered on a Mavic 3 Pro. And that's, again, because it has thermal, so solar inspections, utility inspections, the stuff that pays good, good, good money. 
that offers high frequency, you know, that that's going to open those things up. And, you know, another thing is, I know we're kind of going off the rails here because he provided these two drones that are on wild ends of the spectrum. But hey, he doesn't know he's just starting out. You can't, you can't like berate the guy. So that said, you try to take it and say, well, I see your train of thought. Let's kind of roll with this. And what I will say is, have you ever seen a car commercial or a, or a, car, a reel about a car and they're showing the turbos winding up in thermal? I mean, I, have I, not. I have an EcoBoost. I would love to see that if someone was selling me on a car and they had the M30T pointed at the hood with the hood open and you can see those turbos winding, that would be a cool shot. But again, this is getting wildly cre <laughs> creative to try wow. to justify the cost of that camera. <laughs> Somebody's going to do that now. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> anyway, I love the hmm. question. So when you were like, when you're like, let's, let's be nice. Let's, uh, you know, answer this question and give them the most information that we can. These are the types of rabbit holes. This is why I need you around. I need your positivity because in this world of negativity, it's really easy to get encapsulated in it. So I appreciate you, Rob. Oh, ditto. Appreciate you too. I think, perhaps, hopefully, we've answered your question. As always, if you have follow-up questions, ask drone send them in. We want to hear from you. Ask droneu.com. Look, if you've got a question, there's only two guys that can answer it the best. I'm talking <laughs> about the blonde and the bald. Ask <laughs> droneu.com. Goodbye. <laughs>